You can hear me and see me. Okay. Erica and I have been having a nutty time again. It's been, it's been denying that I exist is what's been happening. I don't know why, but it's much better now. Um, oh, thank God. I'm so glad you can hear me now. Maybe, maybe I can even fix this problem. All right. Uh, in a moment, I'm hoping that Erica will be able to join us as well. Dawn is out at a uh, school function, but it's hysterical watching you guys in the chat window. I I tested a blab out earlier today because I thought, oh, well, maybe the blabs are better because I can actually invite you to be on the video if, um, if I use blab. And so I was testing out some stuff. It's a very odd setup, but... Um, but one of the things I showed people was that for the half hour before the show even started today, you guys were in the chat window and just cracking me up and evidently cracking each other up too. So that was a lot of fun because you are the best. And uh, and then I did the same thing basically on Periscope, which was fun, except I had swiped something so I couldn't actually see the names of anybody. So if you asked me a question, I wasn't ignoring you. I just, I couldn't see it until the very, very, very end. And okay, so yeah, are are any of you? Go ahead and put notes in the in the chat window. Are any of you on Blab normally? Have you ever seen this Blab thing? I found it very very odd and um, potentially marvelous, but it was it was a struggle. Uh, also, let me know if the video feed is coming through any better for you today, because. I spent, yeah, I hadn't used Blab either, uh, Robin. <laughs> and I, I understand that too, Tara. Um, I spent a ridiculous amount of time uh, with Comcast on the phone, which was a waste of last week. And then uh, did a hangout on air with one of the people at Libsyn who answered all of the questions that I had in an hour, all of the questions that Comcast couldn't. And what I've done is I'm paying for more bandwidth, which should solve some of the problems. And now Erica is in the chat, yay! And um, and so I'm hoping that that was the only problem that we were having, and that that's why the um, the video was was stammering and stuttering and having trouble with that. But if it's still coming through wonky for you, please let me know because that's. That's something that'll help me diagnose what the problem is on my end. And that. And hello, Erica. Wee! Hello, hello. Can hello. you hear me okay? I can hear you. Great. I have to turn down my volume, actually. Uh, did you cut your hair? Uh, no, but funny you should ask. I'm going to get it cut on Thursday. So, so we will get to Yay. see you. So... Uh, any any suggestions are welcome because uh andrew's being very non-committal oh well, that's so fine. well all i know is that the last time i got a cut you said it was too short so uh how short was that in the grand scheme of things um, probably about chin length interesting so he, he didn't like that. That was too short. So, um, yeah. you know, I, fi I figure, hey, he's the one who's got to look at me. That is, true. you know, that is true. So, and uh, Aiden has made it clear that he will disown me as his mother if I cut my hair. So I'm stuck. But I didn't tell him that I cut my bangs. I'm hoping that I'm still allowed to do that. That would be bad <laughs> if. I was not allowed to do that. But so Don is Don is at school stuff. You were stuck in the uh, it feels like hell's waiting room. It feels like being in a Kafka nightmare trying to get these live streams going some days. It's just I know. Oh, and there's a wasp in here. Okay, that's awesome. Um we have a, I Erica knows this and I told either the blab stream or the periscope stream we have a ginormous storm and I just looked at the weather tracking while we are on today, the storm is supposed to roll in and right now it's incredibly bright outside and I'm guessing it's going to slowly darken as, as we talk. If lightning strikes, 
like it did during the last storm, um, I may wink out of existence. And if I go, Erica goes, and it's nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weather. Now I can't find the wasp. That's great, too. Oh. And uh, Tara says I should try for a flippy bit right at the collarbone. And that's that's pretty close to what I'm probably going to do. My hair actually naturally does the little flippy bit at the collarbone bone until it gets to a certain length and then it just goes Bleh. yep and just sits there and, and looks looks like you know i belong at woodstock with my limp long plain hair um so uh gonna try for probably a bit of the flippy bit at the bottom and uh i may go back to bangs and uh layers around the face We'll see. Well, that's what um, it was looking like when when all I could see was the tiny little, um, you know, the little tiny little square of you down at the bottom of the screen. It's the way you have. Oh, that's hair, yeah. That kind of, that girl. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really really long. Wow. That's what used to be my bangs. So. How long have you been growing it? And both kids got their hair cut last week on Saturday, and they won't let me take pictures to show, but they look amazing. Abby looks like Zoe Deschanel with the heavy bangs down to about here, and then all her wonderful wavy awesomeness this way. And Sarah's is sort of like a shag, but with a shaved part back here. It shows if she puts her hair up and not if she puts her hair down and it just looks amazing and um cool and hopefully it'll still look good a month from today when she graduates from high school i yeah. can't deal uh -uh. i can't deal so no. sorry for all this non-crafty talk you guys but this is this is huge my my oldest is about to graduate from high school and that's a big deal mm -hmm. so but I do have, oh, yes, Heather's choking on water. I'm choking on water. I do think that kids graduating from high school is craftiness. I think it's yes. very crafty getting them that's, there. <laughs> that's, that's true. I can't even, and it's a it's, uh, big deal. But I do have a more obviously crafty stuff. Yay. As long as, less. so... Um, I found some a bobbin of um, uh, singles of uh, Rambouillet Ooh. that I had dyed, Ooh. and I tried as carefully as I could to separate it into two bottoms. The bo two bottoms, that's cute. Two bobbins um, for plying, and I plied it, and I haven't washed it yet. But this is 135 yards <gasps> of Two ply ramble. It's kind of nubby. It's got some weird bits, um, but I think that's pretty focused. Yes, that looks great. So I I did this plying on, and it it had been spun on the wheel, but I plied it on the spindle. I like doing that. Uh, you have more control, I think. Do you, is that I, is that like yeah. a movie, kind of a movie peaky color? Or it yeah yeah it's a pinkish purplish color. Um, and remember all that spindle spinning I have been showing the last several weeks. I finished it. I finished my eight ounces of Be Myself, which is half of it is, um, merino silk and half of it is BFL silk, but all in the same colorways. So I got... Seven bobbins of singles. Whoa! I, I can't there. Now you can see all of them. Wow. And so this is, um, for those playing along at home, it's a cream, brown, yellow, and orange. And um, the bobbins definitely look different. I think um, later in my spinning... Because I started spinning this uh, during Tour de Fleece of uh, 2014 and then set it aside and stuff.
but I'm uh, as I got to the more recent part, I was doing longer repeats of the color. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really interesting looking when I apply it. Um, I just haven't applied it yet. I want to. When you, I'm, I'm debating. When you debating do, on whether to use the wheel or the spindle. Yeah, well, I understand that. When when you do your spindle spinning. Are you doing it usually at night, the same time that you would be doing knitting? Or do you take it with you? Um, usually at, it's at home. Um, however, I did a lot of the plying of that, um, of the, the Mofi stuff uh, at the hairdresser when the girls were getting their hair cut on Saturday. So I... It was awesome plying in public, and I had people, I was amazed that nobody asked, because everybody was staring at it as they walked past, back and forth, back and forth, and I kept waiting for somebody to ask what I was doing. Um, they didn't? And no one did. I was so bummed. Don't um, they know that we're maybe they were dying to suck them into our world? Either that or else they were all so crafty themselves that they knew what I was doing and didn't feel the need to ask, but I doubt, I doubt that. Yeah, because um, if, if they were one of us, they would have asked you what spindle and what fiber. Right. True. True. Or what I was going to do with it. and Yeah. So anyhow, um, I have those. And um, yes. <laughs> Tara said, little kid pointing, mommy, 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 look, that lady's being odd. Um, <laughs> yep. I have had little, I've had little kid ask me, what are you playing with? And I thought that was pretty cool because it, it, it does look like yeah. you're playing with something. Um, that, was, that was a very logical question. I like that. And uh, I'm being super brief today. I have one, one more thing that I discovered um, just today. Yes. And this is, this is appropriate with the movie that is coming out shortly that my, I know one of my kids is dying to see. But if you like Amigurumi. Oh. Oh, sorry. This is... Amigurumi of the Avengers. Little teeny Amigurumi of the Avengers. So there's Black Widow, Captain America, Hawkeye, Thor, Iron Man, and Hulk. And um, they come, and they're all about each about two inches tall when finished. And um, this, it, they all come together as a, a bundle of six patterns for $9.99 on Ravelry. Um, and it says Avengers Volume 1 Amigurumi mm -hmm. Miniatures. So I guess there will be more later. Um, but I just thought they were really adorable. And they fit in with the uh, foosball table hack that we've been doing mm -hmm. for uh, the wedding. Which I will, I will show you next week. The wedding is this weekend, but I haven't done the... Um, I've got. I need to get the felt for the little bow ties for the grooms. So, for anyone who's who hasn't heard the last couple of weeks, uh, we have a foosball table that a coworker is borrowing for his wedding reception, and we have turned the one team into all the bride and groom, uh, complete with photos of their face, actual faces, and tool for the veil of the bride. And the other team is all Marvel uh, villains. So um, so it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Heather, don't get eaten by the jumping spider on your printer paper. That's I scary. I know. Jumping spiders are, are, are creepy. Yes. This one um, was outside the window this morning and then with the wasp, evidently. And... Uh, and then all of a sudden was in here and I tried to get it with the little vacuum cleaner, which is what I'm going to go after the wasp with shortly. And, uh, and that didn't work because it jumps. And so it jumped onto the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Icky, icky. I'm not thrilled. Oh, I did find two other things. Oh, good. I did, I did find two other things. When I was looking for my... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at Crooked Knits, who's just... <laughs> Uh, who wants to watch if the spider comes for Heather. Um, uh, I, when I was looking for my storage bobbins. Um, no, that looks like a... a um, Land shark. Uh, Venus flytrap. Heather's doing a Venus flytrap <laughs> thing. Doing Audrey, too. Yes. Uh, I found 12 yards of some unknown undyed singles. Um, and 25 yards of some fatter, ugly, greenish, yellowish, rambouillet, slightly felted, uh, singles. That could be a lot of fun. And I'm pretty sure I made a two-ply out of this, and this is just what was left over. Um, so... Uh, yeah, and if I remember correctly, I knit it into a hat for charity that actually looked better than the plain yarn looks because to me this looks pretty pukey. Um, yeah, but when so, you knit that up, that's going to look really cool. Cause it's it's it is sort of a toddler poop green. Yeah, uh, really growing up, you. growing up, I lived in two different houses with carpeting this exact color because in each of those houses when we moved in my mom was potty training a kid and she figured this color would disguise any whoopsies uh the best and so i grew up with this disgusting color carpeting in my home um yeah. which i suppose there are worse things at there least it wasn't shag so there you um, go do you know that was for the bright yellow red Bright when yellow we, rug was the shag, but not not the wall to wall carpeting. When we went to uh, Graceland, it was still when they had human tour guides that you would lead you around Elvis's home. I know, and you can't say Graceland without starting to sing the song. But the the woman walked in and sa <laughs> said, "Now." If you look to your right, you will see a lovely example of 1970s decor. And I almost lost anything that was near my body because I thought, you can't put 1970s decor and lovely in the same sentence. It just, there's a cognitive dissonance there because all I can think of is avocado green refrigerators and that color green shag carpet and... And evidently Elvis's living room. So it was an adventure. One day, one day I will show you pictures of what our living room and dining room looked like when we purchased this house before we made changes to it. It had a 1970s avocado green shag carpeting wall to wall and gold curtains wow. and and dark brown brady bunch um paneling all right it was it was horrible which goes right along with uh robin saying they had a 70s shag throw rug that was asymmetric triangles of poop green mustard yellow and white and tara uh, says don't forget the brown and orange so i'm gonna or, I'm going to I'm going to compete yeah. in this now because the first place we bought in Brooklyn our our brownstone the reason we got it was because we we described the place as a prom date with a nice personality. Yeah. <laughs> People had passed She's pretty on in her. the face. Exactly. People had passed on her for 2 years and this was uh, it was an entire floor of a Brooklyn brownstone in a co-op a four family co-op. It was a, a complete steal. But the reason why nobody had bought it was because the woman who lived there before us who was selling it had painted all of the trim this color pink and all of the wings like a magenta pink yeah yes. it's like I, pepto like atomic pepto bismol pink and then all of the wainscoting was a baby oh actually it's the baby blue that's in the um craft lit 
on the um, the live stream page. And, and and I mean, it was it was the kind of color change that makes your eyes go wonky, like when you see green and red right next to each other. Oh, uh -huh. the entire house. And it was the original wood trim. But we could tell it was the original wood trim. And not only that, but that the pocket window, the pocket doors were original. The glass on one of them was original. And the shutters in the front of the house were the recessed shutters. And they were the originals. She painted all of these pink. So we, had, oh my, we were, we were like a Chippendales family. We were stripping all the time. It oh was very boy. Sad. It was a lot of work, but it was beautiful. And then, you know, the tragedy of the whole thing was when we finally left after 9 11, the family that we sold it to. If we had known this, we wouldn't have left um, or sold it to them anyway. Um, they ripped everything out, they ripped out all the wood. Oh. No, yeah. it should be criminal. I really think when you're talking about something that's like 140 year old oak, I, I don't think you should be allowed to rip that out. That's just wrong. As is having a wasp in your house. I only have one thing to share, and it's not even okay. Mine. This not is not even yours. It's not it's even stolen. Mine. It's purloined. It's purloined. Yes, I have purloined it, and and it is purloined from the what would Madame Defarge knit Shakespeare book. Um, since, since I wasn't able to do anything because all I was doing was cooking for Passover this week. Um, I thought, oh, I can start showing you guys stuff from the books before I send it back to the designers. And so the first one is one of my favorites. It is the tea cozy. This is from Midsummer Night's Dream. And that was so popular. That was that so beautiful? popular. So much wonderful detail work. And they have their little butterflies and their little flowers. And I mean, look at so this is for those playing along at home. This is a spring green um, mm -hmm. tea cozy with a raised cable pattern to look like leaves, and then applique on as uh, some little knitted ladybugs and flowers of different colors, and some teeny, some big, and then on the top is a giant white flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um with and it's just you. it with leaves under it it's just adorable adorable um and we have the and if i remember correctly it had you know about 80 bajillion favorites on ravelry and that's yeah. that's a technical term 80 bajillion i i think it is a technical term <clears throat> and it is certainly well deserved and i'm i'm looking at the the color on the camera i don't know if the greens are coming through well enough to be able to show that it they used a variegated um, a very bright variegated green. Let's see if I do it that way. Yeah, you can't tell on the camera that it's variegated. No, no it's too bad. Um, but they did a lovely job. And variegated stuff doesn't always look great when you're doing cabling patterns. But no. Just subtle enough that when you're up close to it, you go, oh, that's beautiful. Um, but this is the the girls at, at Mighty Distractable who also did the Rosemary's Baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still... I love the fact that we have a Rosemary's Baby layout from from the first book. That was just or sec, second book. That was that was something that made me very happy because they wrote and said, um, "How do you define classic?" And I said, "Well, for the podcast, I have to define it as something that's in the public domain." And they said, "Well, what about right. classic for the modern world?" I don't see any reason why we can't do that for the books, as long as we're not quoting it. Yeah, or extensively quoting it. I mean, we can quote it for right. You know showing a couple cents. I mean you I even, and I think we quoted Jane Eyre for yours but not that not that Charlotte Bronte would have come back from the dead to get mad at us. Uh yeah, I think that's in the public domain by now, dear. A little bit. Um a little, little bit. bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm reading the chat window again. Ah, uh, you guys are funny. That's what I'm going to try. Aren't they? I know. I'm going to have to play with this blab thing because we'd be able to have them come on with us. Ah. Uh. And then I could give the wasp its own camera too. <laughs> wasp cam. Wasp cam. Me. So, Tar oh dear, what would Madame Defarge knit Tarzan? No, 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 no. That would be quick knitting. It, well, true. This this is true. Just a loin. Um, yeah, that's. I'm. Do you remember? Yeah back american express used to do these magazine ads full page 
with a famous person who would say, member since whatever year. Mm -hmm. Remember Greg Louganis? Mm -hmm. The Olympic guy? They did one of him in a tree in, a, in the jungle in a loincloth looking like Tarzan. Well, that's just fine. And to Greg Louganis, member since whatever. So, yes, when uh, A.T. said that about what would mound a farge in Tarzan, and then you said loincloth, that's exactly what it made me think of. That's um, where you went, huh? Uh, because it was a bone of contention uh, at work. I was a receptionist who gave the other receptionists their breaks and their lunches, and this one guy had it on his desk, and I didn't particularly feel like looking at it the whole time I sat at his desk when I was relieving him. So I would put the tape dispenser on top of it. But then I would forget to take the tape dispenser off. And then he'd be all offended and mad. And, and you know, we'd go round and round about it. And I'd say, I'm sorry, I just forgot to take it off. Just, you know, I'm not telling you you can't have it or you shouldn't have it. I'm just saying I don't feel like looking at it. Um, so, yeah, we went round and round about that. Heather's falling over. I um, I, I, ha I actually did get into it. with. Well, I didn't get into it. He was very sweet. But I was 20, what, 24 when I was working at Disney. And uh, one of the animators, actually several of them, but one of the animators who I actually got to be friends with had a like a girly calendar in his office. And I was going around delivering stuff to all of them all the time. And... I hadn't been there for very long. It was probably a month into it. And I said, R really, you have that? Why? And he said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> and I'm thinking, what do you okay, mean? What do you mean? It's what, 1991? This can't be, I can't be so cutting edge because that's just not my way. So I, I said, well, it's kind of, I, honestly, it's kind of weird to have to come in here and deliver the stuff to you and you know, get orders for your pencils and stuff like that and have that on the wall. And he looked over. Now, was it bikini babes or actual nudity? Oh, it was actual nudity. Oh, but, geez. But again, work. And, and this was what was interesting is it, it and it did make me kind of rethink things because he really was a very nice guy. He wasn't lascivious or gross or anything. And he really did kind of look at it for the first time as what it was and said, Oh, but that, but that's just, that's just the human form. And women look so much better than men do. And I, I kind of thought for a while about the fact that all of these artists that I'm in the building with who can draw anything, they all had to take um, drawing classes with nude models for years. And that they, they see something completely different in it than we do and it wasn't pornography i mean it was like it wasn't like hustler or anything like that it was tasteful i guess for when it comes to nude photographs of women but but it was it was really weird and it was one of those moments where i felt pretty comfortable speaking my mind and he felt pretty comfortable speaking his mind and i didn't get mad at him or anything it just kind of brought right. it up as a topic of conversation but the next time i went in he'd taken it down which ah. he, was, he was a nice guy but it was, it was weird all of a sudden to realize that all of the men, the 150 men that are surrounding me, have all spent extensive time drawing naked women. Yeah, that, would, men. that, that would be weird. And, uh, and yes, uh, Tara, I, I understand the uh, larger people are more interesting to draw because of the roles and, and just, uh, yeah, it's more interesting. It's not not so angular um i think that's true so i could i could see that it would it takes more skill i would think yeah so i would think so too and uh, um by the way the at the what would madame defarge knit call of cthulhu in the first um uh, madame defarge knits book we have cthulhu socks with tentacles that wrap around the leg so yeah they're in there and then, yes and people who aren't afraid to pose that would not be me. I, I could never do that. Yeah. Not uh -uh. me either. Uh -uh. No, I let other not happening. Uh -uh. Not even when I was 24. 
Yes. I don't um, know how you don't know those socks, Tara. They're in the first Defarge book. Do you have the first? And it's actually, it should be its own pattern on Ravelry too now. All of the first and second books should be their own patterns. And, uh, and Crooked Knits said she worked at a, a yarn shop where they had an almost a calendar of nearly naked men um, in the bathroom and it had actually been put out by Walmiza. Um, uh, back in the days before Ravelry, when every, I think it was April, there would be the annual flash your stash day where you would post a picture of your entire stash. Wendy Bernard, um, Wendy Bernard of Knit and Tonic posted this awesome picture where she was lying on her back in a large bathtub and looked like she was completely naked except she was her whole torso was covered by yarn she had just had skein after skein after skein after skein overflowing out of the bathtub um, and it was the most awesome picture her husband had stood on a ladder to take it um, and it helps that he's a photographer and uh, we joked about uh, raising money for Nitty by getting different famous designers to pose similarly with their stash, but it never happened. Um, but that was that is the best stash picture I, I ever saw. It was, you know, and it helps that Wendy's beautiful too, right? But, um, but yeah. That's very funny. I'm going to have to go look for that picture. That's awesome. Ooh, 2010. <laughs> I like that. Husbands who are willing to pose. That's pretty interesting. Wow. <laughs> I don't think you could pay Andrew enough. Not no. Gonna happen. Not going to happen. Well, did you have anything else to share, Erica? Um, I'm trying to think. I um, haven't done any awesome cooking like, well, uh, we, we ate some pastrami that Andrew made, which was pretty awesome. And that's, pastrami is quite a process. You know, you take the giant hunk of meat and you, it needs to be brined and then it, it needs to be rinsed and then smoked and um, then steamed. Um, and holy cannoli, it was good. Um, had made some uh, people made some good Rubens with that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you need a recipe for little um, like energy bites, you know, like little granola bar bites, um, uh, Abby found one that just smells awesome. It's just uh, oats, peanut butter, flaxseed, honey, and chocolate chips. Mm. So would that be gluten free for the gluten free folks? Mm -hmm. So, um, and she, you know, ever, ever the uh, orderly tidy one, she she used a little cookie scooper to form them. So these are these perfect little balls. Um, so I, I'll put those. I'll put the link up for that in case anybody's looking for another little sweet, easy, no bake, sweet treat uh, recipe. Absolutely. The only thing that happened that was exciting was I found a Manischewitz matzo ball, gluten-free matzo ball recipe, not recipe, um, mix. mix. Yeah. So I saw that. Time, I put it up on Instagram because for the first time ever, I was able to actually have matzo balls that worked the way matzo balls are supposed to. It, they either, gluten-free ones are tricky the way gluten-free stuff always is. And so this was, mm -hmm. this was very happy because when when you're not feeling 100%, matzo ball soup can really, well-made matzo ball soup can really be a good thing. And AT, thank you for asking about my sister. She is, um, she is still uh, having a hard time sleeping. Pregnant. And yeah, and she's still very pregnant and miserable. But it actually got to a point where uh, my mom and I got on and asked her if she wanted me to just come up and help out because her, her three-year-old is being a pill. And, and it's the end of the school year, and so she has to grade all her papers, and it's just, oh, you gosh. don't want to do that when you're in your 38th week. 
but she's she's she is a trooper and she's poking along and I'll disappear at some point. I can't say when, but it will happen. Well, do let us know. I and know. Uh, I wish I had more craftiness to, to tell you, but uh, um, that's it. Got an appointment with the surgeon this afternoon, so we'll know soon if I'm going to have surgery. All um, right. If I'll be, help, crafting, be a, cra crafting a healthy body. So, um, yeah, that will be a good thing. I vote yes. I'm going to go kill me a spider is what I'm going to do. All right. Go kill your spider. And uh, at least it'll be easier to edit down because we're shorter this week. I know, right? It's true. Well, I'm always short. You're your... tall, but yeah. Nobody knows. And thank you. Thank you for the positive vibes, AT. It actually would be a good thing if the doctor says yes to the surgery. Um, it would be it would be a good thing because yeah, um, it, it would be fixing a surgery that was only sort of successful um, a few years ago. Um, and it would be improving my quality of life significantly. Um, good things all around. Without going into too much detail, let's just say I could probably, I might finally be able to lose the uh, nickname my family has for me of Puddles. So that's all I would say on that. That's lovely. That's the kind of family support yeah. that I always really. I know they love me so much. It's a special kind of love. It's the mom. Yes. Love. Yeah. <laughs> Very special. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, have a good week. You too. I've got two chapters of the book coming for this Friday, and they're two awesome chapters. Yes. Yay. All righty. Well, see you soon. Keep me posted about your sister. I will. I, will. I know. <laughs> I'm watching. Sorry, this. I'm laughing at the chat room. I'm not laughing at you or your sister. No, I know. I'm looking at it too. Uh, I will. And uh, you have a good week. And everybody who's here watching, have a great week. And Jill joined us for the first time yes. too. So that was very fun. And it was always good to see everybody else here. We'll talk to you soon. Yes. Yay. Bye.